All right, bang, bang. Today is Monday. It is September 6th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Um, so normally you're used to a draft at this time. Um, I am sad to inform you that today will not be a draft. However, we will be having our scheduled draft sometime this week, either Wednesday or Thursday. So be on the lookout for that. I know you guys are looking for that. It will be there. I promise you. But today I really wanted to get something out there, uh, something I've been working on for over a year. I'm here on Zoom with Marty Mush. Um, and if you listen Thursday, you're already well informed about what this is. It's a documentary we've been doing. And uh, Marty, we're excited. I mean, it's crazy. We It's literally, we were we drove to Stanford, Connecticut during the Yankees playoff run last year. And it's just coming out now. <laughs> overnight. Overnight we drove. It was. And um, I, I want to give a backstory because me and you felt like you you talked about the story and I like called you. I was like, dude, this story is fucking insane. I was like, I want to do something on it, and it's it's just oh, it was a wild ride this entire thing. Oh, it was so wild, and that's the thing where I was so fascinated by it. So after Marty and I talk for a couple minutes here, we're going to air the original episode that I did with Chief on Travis the Chimpanzee. Um, you guys, if you've been listening for a long time, you guys know the story by now, uh, just to kind of give you a refresher before the premiere, the premiere is going to be on Wednesday. It comes out at 7 PM Eastern. So make sure you're looking for that. It'll be on the Barstool YouTube. You can go live. I believe Marty and I will be in the comments talking about everything. And, uh, yeah, it was one of those things that I was fascinated by. I talked about it on the podcast. I talked about it on radio and Marty was really like, Hey man, let's keep turning the rock on there. Uh, you know, you should do that. I was like, all right, you know, you really think so. And then he, you know, finally was like, all right, fine. You're right. I'm, I'm fascinated by this story. It just co- had me completely captivated. So, uh, we wanted to do more. We want to look at more and we did that. Um, we have footage from, you know, the original sanctuary that Travis is from. Uh, we went to the original house where the uh, vicious, uh, tragic attack happened. Um, and probably the biggest part of it all is we were able to speak with this cop who uh, killed Travis, unfortunately. Um, and that's pretty much the biggest part about it, guys, because he has turned down a lot of interviews. He's turned down um, HBO me- and Netflix, dude. Yes, he's turned down a lot, dude. So, um, it's it's a big one. It's it's about a half hour long. And uh, here's the thing, too, I wanted to say. If you're going to listen to this episode that's going to play here shortly, it's maybe some of it is in a comedic tone. I know Chief and I really laughed about the first time when someone threw something at him in the seat. Uh, it got a lot darker than I think we both had intended it to be. And it's, it's not a comedy at all. It, it's very... It's a very sad story. It's very tragic, like I said. And uh, so I just want to say that, too. And uh, the the podcast that you're about to hear or that you've heard before last year is going to be a completely different tone than what you're going to watch on Wednesday, which is uh, which is kind of interesting. This is my first time doing something like this. So I wasn't prepared to have such a shift of, you know, the the pair. It was it, it was it was a complete shift of what I thought I was getting into and um it's uh it, it was it was interesting for sure yeah so that's what i wanted to say too because when we first got into the topic we we're like i mean this monkey dresses up as a baseball player he eats ice cream he's driving a car like this is like it was kind of funny at first but then we got into it, we just didn't know what the tone of the story was going to be like we went mm-hmm. to uh the sanctuary first we're like i'm right, not sure if it's going to be funny we don't know the entire thing and then we actually got into it like holy shit, we're turning this into like a very serious documentary because it's a really traumatic experience for people. And we're not making fun of it at all. We just kind of wanted to get the story out there because no one's ever heard from the cop. And the cop was one of the, a great interview. And mm. it's, again, this is, I think, the first thing Barcelona's ever done that's like this serious. The only thing I could think of is Donnie going into the, the Vegas. The mole people. people one thing. Yeah, it would. I would say it'd be... Uh, somewhat of a similar tone as that and uh yeah you're right it's i hope people enjoy it like i said it took us a long time to do just because you know we got paused a lot with you know gambling season and whatnot um but yeah we uh put a lot of effort into it and can't say enough about our editor trey who just took this on his plate uh for no reason really um and he like this is not what he 
uh, really gets, I mean, he gets paid to edit, but not to do random off projects that we pitched to him. And he did an incredible job. Fucking Dana. It's the one that shot it. And this <laughs> yeah. guy just didn't do it. So thank, yeah, shout out Trey for make, putting this back alive. And yeah, I'm just excited for it to come out. We've, we've been talking about this people in the office. Like, dude, I've heard about this th- monkey video for like years. Yeah. So you've probably, you know, this is, this is Monday. We posted a couple trailers last Thursday and throughout the weekend. So just be on the lookout for it guys. Um, like I said, Wednesday, 7 PM Eastern, Barstool YouTube will be there. We hope you'll be there too. I think we could we could even do a little, little post show after that. We could yeah, do, we, we could do little, something like that. Yeah, yeah maybe a Facebook Live or something. Or, like, uh, hear the process of everything. Yeah, we could do like an Instagram Live or something. Yeah. Cool. Well, all right, Marty. Um, anything else from you? No, I'm just seriously excited. It's never done anything serious in my life, and this was like eye opening shit, and it's a story that you're never going to hear again probably and it's just we wanted to get it out there and i hope you guys like it definitely definitely we hope you guys like it um before we get into it though guys i do want to talk about upstart before we get into the travis episode upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online whether it's paying off credit cards consolidating high interest debt or funding personal expenses over half a million people have used upstart to get one fixed monthly payment Upstart knows you're more than just a credit score and is expanding access to affordable credit. Unlike other lenders, Upstart considers your income and current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 to $50,000, and you can receive the funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Marty, you know what it's like. I mean, you know, sometimes the debt can be you know, a, a mountain and it feels like you're just chipping away. You can't get anyway. That's why you need a service like this, right? Uh, yeah, it, no, I can't stress this enough. You need a service just like this to help people just like me out. Exactly. So find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today. When you go to upstart.com slash Eddie, loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Uh, start being smarter, guys. Upstart.com slash Eddie, E-D-D-I-E. All right, Marty, here we go. Here's a replay of 2020's episode with Chief on Travis the Chimpanzee. He could have got me. If he really wanted me, I wouldn't be here right now. When he opened that door, he could have just jumped in and got me because I froze and my gun was still in the holster at that point. I didn't know he was going to open the door. And then I came out of it and our eyes met. We were just looking at each other. And I, I, this is the part that could get a little otherworldly or whatever, but I tell people, I said, I'm not ashamed to admit it, whatever your beliefs are. We looked at each other and he gave me a look and I felt, I didn't hear anything, but I felt from him, please do this. Like I've had enough. Please do what you gotta do. All right, Ben Mag, today is Wednesday, March 25th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Uh, Chief, you're back today. Happy to be back. I mean, listen. In studio this time. In studio this time. Same old jam, not mm-hmm. virtual. Um, today's topic, I mean, I, I just have great enthusiasm for it. It's fucked up. It's a sad story, but it's something that like I'm pretty passionate about. <laughs> yeah. Travis the chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah. So it's a what did they do? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a human it's a chimpanzee whose name is Travis mm-hmm. and what pound for pound is one of the most fucked up stories I think I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Because I don't remember this happening like when it went down, like in real time, mm-hmm. but reading back, it's a Wikipedia that's just always has been burned into my brain. And I don't, I just felt like a lot of people might not know the story and it's time to bring up Travis, the chimpanzee back into the limelight. It's a great, what they do. And it's our first, maybe our only ever non-human, what they do. <laughs> what like, they do. You know? Maybe. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. Secretariat or fucking Bushwhacker might. might there you go. Bushwhacker would be a good one. Yeah. yeah but, um, okay. So needless to say, Travis, a lot of people are probably like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. How did this even come up? Like you brought it up. 
the other day, right? We were, ta- we were talking about it on radio. I don't know how it came up. It might have came up, I want to say. Yeah, it came up on radio, yes. Mm, okay. But how I got down the wormhole, I think it was because of Rogan or something. Okay. They talked about, like, he's, he's talked about how, like, strong chimpanzees are and, like, because they, they are, are yeah. insanely strong. It was talking. We were talking about that on radio because we're talking about it with Dave and we're talking about how, like, m- like male chimps in the wild are ferocious and they're like they're kind of human like in their in their organizations and their communities like if you'll have two like rival clans of chimps in the jungle and if they start like foraging or like venturing out into in the the other like the other males from the other community will fuck that guy up from, oh yeah yeah and like just like rip them apart limb from limb they're like ferociously strong vicious animals and then you think of like these cute little like hairy monkeys yeah, you think of the fucking guy from a Jungle Book, and that is not the case. Right, exactly. Not the case. Not so the listen, case. because chimpanzees, like you said, they are, you know, they are the closest species to, to man. Yeah, yeah. So that's our that's our closest cousin, I believe. Right, there's some sort of missing link in between, but yeah, genetically, like, and, and how the way their brain functions is very close as well. Like they're, and like, like we said, a lot of their communities, like their social um, yes. cues and organizations are, are similar to humans too. So. But they're somehow one point, they're 1.5 times stronger than us. So, yeah, you know, take that for what you will. Mm-hmm. But moving on to Travis, there's some fucking background on the chimpanzee. So Travis was a chimpanzee. Mm-hmm who was bought by this couple named Sandra and Jerome Harold yeah. in Missouri when he was three years old in 2001. Yeah, and, and his mother, Travis's mother, was a runner. So she got out. like She was a, a captive chimp as well. She was running around, and she was fatally shot following an escape uh, in 2001. And then, you know, like you said, like they, they adopted uh, this chimp and brought him back to their home in Connecticut. Yeah, so they bring him back to the home in Connecticut. They you know fall in love with this chimp they own a tow truck company Mm -hmm. and travis was always hanging out at the tow truck company he was riding shotgun when they went to tow cars he was uh he was just always greeting people at the front of the shop like he was always there he was like more than a mascot yeah he's like part of the family almost an employee yeah yes and now i don't know if this is accurate or not i do have this wikipedia page open too and i i should say before we really get into it this is probably it's got to be a top five Wikipedia page on the internet. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. I've read it so yeah. many times. I'm yeah. like an expert. I'm fucking Travis, the chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah, but the, the Wikipedia page says he was three days old. So maybe he was like a newborn baby. Oh, or really? Think, or maybe I think? was wrong. Maybe okay. I was wrong. Sorry. Could I, be, that, this could be wrong, yes. too, because it is Wikipedia. But Wikipedia says three days old. So they bring him back. And like you said, he's got the t- towing company. He's running around. They're putting clothes on him. He's the mascot. And he's like, the, he's like. The cock of the walk in and, Stanford, Connecticut. And let me tell you, like this guy, we talk about, you're like, oh, yeah, sure. A chimpanzee smart. Like, what does he do? Does he come to the window when the pull, car pulls into the driveway? No, 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 my friend. This motherfucker watched baseball. Mm-hmm. He would wrestle with kids, and he knew when to stop when he was going too rough. They'd say, Travis, stop. Yep. He opened doors with keys. Yep. He dressed himself. He fucking watered plants. He ate at the table. He loved ice cream. He loved it so much, he knew the ice cream truck schedule and would fucking <laughs> run to the truck when he heard the jingle. He brushed his teeth. He knew how to log on a computer to watch fucking, to look at pictures. And the fucking guy even drove a couple times. This guy, I mean, like, you talk about he might have been an employee. Like, I bet you he could do an oil change. He probably could. He probably could. That's like, yeah. I, I, number one, like, even just the crazy how the story ends and its sad nature. Mm-hmm. It, even just that, just that beginning is just unbelievable in itself because I didn't know chimps were that capable. And you'd think that, like, even if they are super smart. Who the fuck are these people? Like they're just people who own a tow truck company in Connecticut. Like they're not professional animal trainers. Like, but they got they got Travis doing all the things that you just said. The fact that he knows like the ice cream truck schedule, like chimps can tell time. Like what the fuck? It's crazy. Yeah. So all these fucking like this guy is basically like you said, he's like a mascot, more than mm-hmm. a mascot for the whole town. Everybody knows him. Yeah. He's out and about. And everything's like, it's just, hey, there's Travis, the mm. chimpanzee. He yeah. is, if you did the fucking census, it's census season, Travis might get a fucking, you know, he might get a nod. Yeah. Because that's how many people knew him and that's, you know, whatever. So yeah. moving along, mm-hmm. we get to 2003. But he is at the end of the day. You can you can put clothes on him. You can do all the stuff, teach him these different things. At the end of the day, he's still a wild animal. And found that out in 2003. 2003. So you're going to get into a little bit here. What? Tell me about all three. So 2003. You know he's the, he's 
living with the heralds, but he, you know, they drive him around, and they it's not like you put him in a car seat. They just like you said, he's riding shotgun. So they're at this. Uh, <laughs> I can't even get through it. <laughs> it's like the, the vision of this thing. So anyway, so he, he escaped, okay, from their car. But what happened was they're sitting in traffic at this intersection, like waiting to turn, waiting to turn. Somebody like was like walking by and sees a fucking monkey chimpanzee sitting in the front seat. They're like, what the fuck? And they throw something uh, at the at the car. And they had the window cracked just a little bit. And it was like an ice cream wrapper or something, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. And fucking Travis did not like that. <laughs> came, came through the window and hit him. So he's like, I'll fuck this guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Don't, it's, it's, it's just why we're laughing is because it's such a funny image because that's what happened in 2003. Someone threw a wrapper through the fucking crack of the window of Travis. And if you can just picture the imagery of a fucking chimp, he's got just his, cocking back, unclicking the fucking seatbelt, and then he got out. He's got his jeans on. He's got his baseball tee on. He just opens the like, clicks the seatbelt off. He's like, I've had a fucking enough of these humans. Fuck with. He opens the door and chases the guy down the street. So you got you got. You know, he's got road rage. He got Travis the Chimp. He learned all the other stuff. He learned road rage, too. And he chased after this guy. He was on the loose for hours because he was like the guy eventually who threw the rapper at him and hit him like through the car window. He got away. But Travis was just like on. Now he's just on the loose. And I don't understand how Travis didn't catch him in the first place. I, who know, I mean, maybe he jumped back in another car like they're they're not really uh, the Wikipedia page doesn't give like a, a an exact detail of this. And this is one of those things. Or I am so thankful that this is pre phones because the image in my head of like him like with jeans on and like coming back from the tow truck shop and he's just had a long day and someone hits him with a wrapper and he's gotta get out of it like clicks and gets out of there is funnier in my head than I know it was in real life. But I just can't stop. Like, I can't get the image of it and be like, oh, fuck. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You picture him with a red baseball hat on. <laughs> right, right. With, like, the little quarter sleeve. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. just him, fuck this. Just fuck this guy. I'm going yeah. after him. Hey, guys, let's take another quick break here because I want to talk about Roman. Most guys have tried different ways to last longer in bed. But thinking about baseball, saying the Pledge of Allegiance in your head or counting backwards from 10 doesn't always work. Marty, it's not a bad idea to get some extra help, right? Oh, no joke. You really need it. You do. The folks at Roman, they're uh, they're here to help. So they're an online men's health company. They're changing the game with Roman swipes. And swipes, they're a clinically proven way to last longer in bed, guys. This isn't just some placebo fake thing. They're clinically proven. They're effective, easy to use, and fast acting, but they don't require a prescription. Roman can ship swipes to you in discreet, unmarked packaging, and each swipe packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just take the swipe out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, and you're good to go. That's it. Go to GetRoman.com slash walk, and you can get your first month of swipes for just $5 when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash walk. Go get your swipes, people. Everyone wants to be better in the bedroom department, so you really got nothing to lose. All right, let's hop back into the episode. So the police come. Mm -hmm. They get Travis into the car. And several times he let himself out. Yeah. And, you know, he, he had to chase the officers and occasionally chase the officers around the car. So, you know, an incident in 2000. So the incident, that whole incident gets uh, scurried up by, I think, a law gets passed by yeah. Connecticut or something about, like that. About the ability to have and own exotic animals. So, okay. Yeah. So they that was what happened. They said uh, pets as owners, they, they have to apply for permits. And none of these, they can't have a primate weighing more than 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. So that that change and they, you know, they didn't enforce the law in the Herald and they're saying that um, they that this they had this chimp who weighed 200 pounds. That's what yeah, they recorded in Wikipedia. Boy. Like I didn't know chimps could even be that big, but I guess like they're pretty chunk. And we got a picture of I don't know if that's he was a big boy. Yeah, Travis is a big boy named after Travis Tritt, too. I don't know if we said that. or not. No, we like, did not. Great day to be mm -hmm. alive is a is a jam. It's there one, you go. one of my all time favorite country songs. But um, so then sadly, after that, all three incident. Mm -hmm. Like their um, grand Travis and the Heralds are grandfathered in. They're yeah, like, you can keep your you can keep Travis because he's like you said favorite guy in the in the town. Seemingly a one time slip up, whatever. Mm -hmm. So one bad day for Travis. One bad day for Travis. Whatever he did. I mean, I don't blame him. He didn't like someone fucking throwing Would ice you? cream. No. So, yeah. So he clicked it off and he fucking chased their ass. A couple guys in this office that would do something like that. Yeah. yeah it could happen to anybody. Yeah. Exactly. So 
the next year comes, sadly, very sad year. Uh, the husband dies and the son dies in a car accident. Horrible. So yeah. really bad. Dramatic. Just, the three of them plus Travis. Mm-hmm. And then seemingly all that's left is her and tra- is Travis. Right. So it's just the chimp and her. Naturally, that's like their, it's like her son. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's like it's like a dog relationship. I understand, mm-hmm. you know. And um, and Travis is on in that family too, so mm-hmm. he's missing them. He doesn't know where, like, can't speak English. He doesn't know what happened. He doesn't understand what death is. He's just two people that he lives with and loves are no longer there. So for sure. So that's two thousand three. That so that's two thousand four. Yeah. And then we fast forward five years later, six years after the two thousand three incident, mm-hmm. and this is where it becomes not funny at all. Yeah. Um, this is where it gets really sad, because in 2009, I guess Travis was acting up, so Sandra called her friend Sharla, mm-hmm. and Travis took the keys or something, he left the house, and you know she called her friend Sharla to go wrangle him in, Yeah. and when Sharla got there, her friend, she had Travis's favorite toy, which was a Tickle Be Elmo, seemingly thinking like, oh, this will wrangle yeah. him in, like he'll be like, oh, Sharla, she knew Sharla because mm-hmm. she worked at the towing company, so definitely not someone he was familiar with. And he saw her, and he immediately pounced on her yeah. and just fucking mauled her. And that is something they even teach you with dogs, where it's like you when you're training a puppy, it's like you have to like show them that if you take their toy away, you'll also give it back. I'm sure he didn't like have that like trust in this woman, so like you got my fucking tickle me emo. And uh, and he went to town on her. And then this is like what we were talking about at the beginning. Like they're savagely strong, like mm-hmm. freaks of nature. Uh, I mean, when, she, I, when I tell you he mauled her people... I mean, he mauled her. Yeah. He ripped her hands off. Yeah. He ripped her nose off. Mm -hmm. Her eyes and basically her whole face was ripped off. Uh, Her lips, her vertebrae was fucked up. Like, it was really bad. So, naturally, Sandra saw what was happening. She ran outside. Mm -hmm. She tried to stop him. Travis, Travis, Travis. It got to the point where she ended up having to take a knife and she stabbed him. Yeah. And Travis turned around. He kind of snarled at her almost like a, what the fuck? Like, wow, how could you betray me? You know what I mean? But he was just in such a rage that she turned around. She went into a car that was nearby that was outside. She locks herself in frantic as fuck. Yeah. I mean, uh, can you, I can't even imagine. So it's like, it's like your kid murdering, trying to murder somebody. And it's like, what do you, how do you even get through to this animal? Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of save yourself too. And then, you know, Charla Nash, she went through like hours and hours and hours of surgery. So in like her fit, like reconstructive surgery, Mm -hmm. like first of all, like trauma surgery to like Mm -hmm. make sure she lived and then had all sorts of like reconstructive surgeries too. She had to have have an experimental (laughs) face transplant surgery that's yes. how fucked up she got from trap it got really bad so then you know naturally she hops in the car though mm-hmm. she calls 911 you know police they get an insane call about a chimpanzee attack and they originally thought it was a hoax right well, and the 911 call is on youtube if you want to listen to it. it's pretty horrifying yeah like there's some bad 911 calls out there this is definitely probably near the top of the list mm-hmm. because the cops didn't realize that she wasn't joking until they heard her say, oh, my God, he's eating her face. Like this guy, like yeah. Travis was just eating her face. So the cops come up. They walk up, and Travis walks up to the cop's passenger door, tries to open it, won't open it, smashes a side mirror off, and goes to the pa- goes to the front seat. Mm-hmm. And the cop in the front seat, his door must have been unlocked. He opens the cop's door. Naturally, the cop fucking just, takes his yeah. gun out. Fires at Travis multiple times, with point blank range, pretty much. And that's it. And Travis retreats. He goes back into the house. Um, they ended up finding Travis dead. He like passed out near his bed. But even that, so stabbed, shot multiple times, and it's just like it, that on on impact wasn't enough to to take down Travis. Exactly, it's crazy. Yeah. Like just a super. Sub like super strength, man. Just it's crazy strength. Freak, yeah. Like you said, Charlotte somehow survives. Essentially, needs a face transplant. Mm-hmm. I don't know how like she lived. The, that those pictures are on the internet too because she went on the Oprah Winfrey show. Yes, that's uh, where she revealed her yeah, face for the first time. Right. Yeah, and it's I mean, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. Yeah, yeah. if you want to look it up, her name yep. is Charla Nash. Nash, sorry, C H A R L A Nash. And, uh, yeah, and they ended up finding that Travis had Xanax in his system. Which is fucking crazy. Crazy. Yeah. It was given to him by Sandra. I'm sure. I'm sure he was on it, and they, he had, was taking medication for Lyme's disease, which is, I think we talked about that maybe on radio, too. 
And, you know, all they test. They're like, this guy must have rabies. Travis, negative for rabies. Mm-hmm. He just like he was just had just had enough. Yeah. And he was uh, 13. I guess mm-hmm. his weight must have been an issue. They said possibly. Two, yeah. 200 pounds. Is pretty big for a uh-huh. chimp, I feel like. So. And so he was 13, I think, at the end when it was yep. all said and done. And I don't know why they said the Xanax. He might have became discombobulated because mm-hmm. of that. And Well, they said that she, Sandra Harold would give him Xanax laced tea. So she would serve him tea, which, I mean, mm-hmm. even that is just like, there's something funny about it, like sitting around at the end of the day with like this monkey having a cup of tea, but Xanax in his tea, and that could have like triggered some of his. Yeah. Um, and supposedly, like they said that Charlotte was also wearing her hair in a different way. So maybe uh, that's okay. why he didn't notice yeah. it. But regardless, something snapped and Travis, a chimpanzee, and he almost killed this woman. Yeah. Um, Charlotte ended up suing Sandra for $50 million. Sandra, in died. a coincidence, died 15 months later. Yeah, because aneurysm. Yeah, yeah. So aortic could aneurysm. Be like stress induced. Who you never know. Exactly. So they settled with her estate for four million, but it, it's just the craziest story ever. It, it and it's it is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like like you said, like a top five you know Wikipedia page ever. I I almost feel like this could be like a short, like a like a 20 minute like show on HBO or something because it's. Or maybe longer. I don't know. They did six episodes on McMillions. So I mean, they can give us three on, on Travis the the Chimp. No, you're absolutely right. There, there should, and then they did stuff on Discovery about it. Yeah. There was other, um, I forget exactly what it was, but it wasn't like a full thing. It was like a 12-minute whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that he does have brothers. Travis does? Yes. Okay. Kramer, and I forgot what the other one's name is. They live in Montana. And they are human pet, like they're pets as well. Ooh. But this was 2009, so I don't know if they've passed or whatever. Yeah. Um, I believe laws were passed after that as well in Connecticut. Yeah. So. so that the, that happened almost like immediately. So they had the law in 2004. We talked about, and then they they passed another one January 6, 2009. Um, and then it was it was officially voted into law at a federal level. Um, on the on February 23rd, 2009. So it was like Travis, you know. That's, I guess, his legacy is that you can't have chimps. Like, you just can't. Like, you just can't do it. No, so. you can't have chimps. Mm-hmm. Kramer and I'm trying to find the other one's name. I don't know. Him and Travis shared a father, so whatever. Half brother, was, maybe. Yeah, 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 something like that. But yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, I don't know, Travis, the chimpanzee. He just kind of. That's just kind of what I want to talk about today. What they do. What they do. Yeah. There you have it, Travis the Chimp. Don't stay away from chimps, man. I'm now officially it, yeah. terrified of chimpanzees. Very anti-chimp. I don't yes. like monkeys in general. Yeah. So they're they're. If, I don't know if you ever been to Lincoln Park Zoo in the monkey house. I have. Stinks. They're mean. They're gross. Just we should just not deal with monkeys. Yeah. So what do they do, Travis the Chimpanzee? There you have it. Uh, I think that's it for today, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. Kind of a weird one. Kind of an abnormal episode for us, but. It's corona, interesting it's nonetheless. Week. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting yeah. nonetheless. Um, so, yeah, we'll cut it off there. Thanks for listening. We will catch you tomorrow.